December 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. My child, be attentive to my wisdom. Pay close attention to my understanding in order to safeguard discretion, and that your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her seductive words are smoother than olive oil. But in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. Lest she should make level the path leading to life, her paths are unstable, but she does not know it. So now, children, listen to me. Do not turn aside from the words I speak. Keep yourself far from her and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your vigor to others and your years to a cruel person. Lest strangers devour your strength and your labor benefit another man's house. And at the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and your body are wasted away. And you will say how I hated discipline. My heart spurned reproof. For I did not obey my teachers, and I did not heed my instructors. I almost came to complete ruin in the midst of the whole congregation. Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Should your springs be dispersed outside your streams of water in the wide plazas? Let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. May your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in your young wife, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you at all times. May you be captivated by her love always. But why should you be captivated, my son, by an adulteress and embrace the bosom of a different woman? For the ways of a person are in front of the Lord's eyes, and the Lord weighs all that person's pass. The wicked will be captured by his own iniquities, and he will be held by the cords of his own sin. He will die because there was no discipline. Because of the greatness of his folly, he will reel. My child, you have made a pledge for your neighbor and have become a guarantor for a stranger. If you have been ensnared by the words you have uttered and have been caught by the words you have spoken, then, my child, do this in order to deliver yourself. Because you have fallen into your neighbor's power, go humble yourself and appeal firmly to your neighbor. Permit no sleep to your eyes or slumber to your eyelids. Deliver yourself like a gazelle from a snare and like a bird from the trap of the fowler. Go to the ant, you sluggard, observe its ways and be wise. It has no commander, overseer, or ruler. Yet it prepares its food in the summer. It gathers at the harvest what it will eat. How long, you sluggard, will you lie there? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to relax, and your poverty will come like a robber and your need like an armed man. A worthless and wicked person walks around saying perverse things. He winks with his eyes, signals with his feet, and points with his fingers. He plots evil with perverse thoughts in his heart. He spreads contention at all times. Therefore his disaster will come suddenly. In an instant he will be broken. And there will be no remedy. There are six things that the Lord hates, even seven things that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift to run to evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who spreads discord among family members. My child, guard the commands of your father and do not forsake the instructions of your mother. Bind them on your heart continually, fasten them around your neck. When you walk about, they will guide you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you wake up, they will talk to you. For the commandments are like a lamp, instruction is like a light, and rebukes of discipline are like the road leading to life. By keeping you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of that loose woman. Do not lust in your heart for her beauty and do not let her captivate you with her alluring eyes. For on account of a prostitute, one is brought down to a loaf of bread. But the wife of another man preys on your precious life. Can a man hold fire against his chest without burning his clothes? Can a man walk on hot coals without scorching his feet? So it is with the one who has sex with his neighbor's wife. 
No one who touches her will escape punishment. People do not despise a thief when he steals to fulfill his need when he is hungry. Yet if he is caught, he must repay seven times over. He might even have to give all the wealth of his house. A man who commits adultery with a woman lacks wisdom. Whoever does it destroys his own life. He will be beaten and despised and his reproach will not be wiped away. For jealousy kindles a husband's rage and he will not show mercy when he takes revenge. He will not consider any compensation. He will not be willing, even if you multiply the compensation. God, I've seen what adultery does to families. I'm sure plenty of people listening to this video have as well. One of the many stories that I know of, it seems like for generations and generations, people have paid for the original choices of two people who chose to sin. One was married uh, to a woman and uh, chose to have an affair with another woman. And he was heavily involved with the church and knew better, but it just seems like as soon as as those basic tiny seeds happen. Uh, maybe it's a little bit flirty, maybe it's laughing, maybe it's sharing something you're not sharing with your wife. As soon as those things start to happen, it creates a false intimacy between the two people. And being men and women, that false intimacy uh, can grow into a sexual relationship, and it did. And he ended up um, getting her pregnant, leaving his wife and two kids, um, I watched those two kids be devastated and make really bad choices in their own relationships. Um, I've watched his ex-wife um, really struggle with so many things, including her relationship with God. Uh, I've watched problems happen in the new family as well as the next generation of that new family. And, and, it, and there were people outside of the family, obviously, that were affected by this as well. And it, it all started from those first couple things that weren't stopped. And it was interesting. I was having a conversation with a, a guy that I was dating. I was getting interested in. And he was interested in me. And I had brought up uh, how impressed I was with my sister and her husband. That they have an agreement between them. That neither of them ever goes to something with a person of the opposite sex by themselves. So they don't go to the movies with a person of the opposite sex. Even if they're just friends or out to lunch or anything like that uh, to just keep at bay any of those possibilities of those first couple seeds happening um, also for anybody looking in from the outside to get the wrong idea about anything and went on to talk about how sometimes it's almost a little bit comical trying to stay true to those rules and guidelines in their marriage but how it has paid off by keeping those small little seeds away from from that temptation and I remember the guy I was had been dating for a while. Um, freaking out would be a mild version. <laughs> freaking out and saying, uh, why in the world would I take something that's so innocent and, and turn it into something that uh, sounds so sinful? And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what I mean at all. It's just putting you in a situation where you have a little bit more of a protection around your marriage that that you will do anything to, to keep that marriage sacred. And if it means you can't go out to the movies with your, with your friend who happens to be a guy um, and you need to bring other people with you, then so be it. Um, the protection of that marriage, to me, was so incredibly important. And he had such a worldly stance on, that's ridiculous, how could anything come? They're just friends, I never think of them as anything else. Um, and I told him, I said, I've had so many friends who've had affairs, it started out as friends and with promises that we would never be anything else. Because honestly, <laughs> who would be married um, to a beautiful wife and have an amazing family and be around a woman uh, where there's flirting and go, oh yeah, so this is gonna lead to an affair and I'm okay with that. That's not how it works. It's just this like slow tumbling uh, down a hill, this like gaining momentum. Uh, and it's very hard to, once that starts to happen, for it to stop uh, by either party. And so, obviously, I broke up with the guy, as you know, God. <laughs> 
But his response was just so worldly to, I can protect this relationship. Don't you believe me that I care about this relationship? I'm like, it is not you. It is Satan and how he tempts us. And it's amazing the ways he comes in. So it's advice in Proverbs, and I know we get it quite a few more times in Proverbs about this, this sinful, adulterous arena. Is so vital to understand, even if you think that your your marriage, your relationships are prone to not have that in it, uh, boy, you might have a situation where you have some seeds being sown right now if you don't have those boundaries in place, uh, if you haven't had that conversation. God, I just ask for your protection and your will in all those those relationships out there, that according to your will, that they will be protected from, from outside forces um, trying to be part of that relationship, trying to break up that relationship. Um, and truly, generations after generations will have to deal with those choices of sin. God, if that's already happened in a family, um, if it is your will to bring reconciliation to that situation, there's so much pain, so much hurt from so many people involved uh, that I know sometimes it, it feels impossible. But with you, I know that all things are possible. And then finally, if that relationship has been broken, God, I just pray that the new families who have started out from, from that bad choice, that they would be God-honoring to you, that, that ultimately those relationships would glorify you. That even though they were started on sin and, and bad choices and potentially a lot of lies, uh, that ultimately that they would be about you. Uh, that their relationship would be about you and that you would be at the center of those relationships so that unfortunately unfortunately those new relationships could be protected as well god thank you for these powerful words and helping us understand how it applies to the world we live in versus the people that you've actually called us to be and boy are they they two different things i pray all this in your son's name amen <music>